What's up guys? We are finally back to working on my Z. Boy, do I have my work cut out because I am competing in two competitions, back-to-back -back weekends, and this thing is still in pieces. Never finished the install of the angle kit because I ran into a few little issues and I wanna fix those first. Now, some of the issues was just waiting for parts and everything showed up, but another one of them was the ball joints. Funny enough, the front ball joints that I replaced on the new car, um, they are bad, at least they're bad on this side. And I thought it would be silly to put a new angle kit on the car with a bad ball joint. And since I already rented the tool from Amazon for the other car, might as well put it to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out and we'll take it from there. Worst job on the car is done, that ball joint's fixed. Still need to get the tie rods wrapped up and do an actual alignment. But for now, we're moving to the worst job off the car, which is actually fixing the fiberglass side skirt I blew up when Alex and I did that practice day. I absolutely hate fiberglass work, but I love these side skirts, so I've gotta fix them. They already started sanding everything. So we've got a pretty, pretty decent repair to do there. Probably won't have those side skirts fixed in time for the event this weekend, but I want to at least get some fiberglass on there so it can dry, because that stuff takes forever. So I'm gonna get the first coat on, and then we'll turn our attention back to the car. Like I said, we've gotta get an alignment, get this thing back on the ground, and do a few other odds and ends, because we're still not ready to compete this weekend, and this is my last day off. <laughs> So I wanted to catch you guys up to speed if you didn't watch the last video on my car where we put the new GK Tech Superlock lower control arms on. Uh, and I also wanted to just kind of correct some things I said because I initially had a plan of running S14 tie rods. They're much longer than stock 350Z tie rods. They're actually a little too long, so I thought, well, that's not a big deal. I just won't run a tie rod spacer. If you're not sure what a tie rod spacer is, I'll cut to a little video of that right now. And if you are curious on the difference of tie rods, this is an S14 tie rod. That is a stock 350Z tie rod. Now I could have made those tie rods work if I ran no spacer. GK Tech gives you a spacer with their bolt-on angle kit. And typically you would just run one on one side. But looking for more angle, I decided let's run none and just do longer tie rods. But that actually is gonna give me less angle. And I wasn't really thinking about this until I started putting everything else together. And I realized that tie rod spacer, what it does is obviously it spaces the tie rod away from the rack, making it longer, but it also makes the inner shaft of the rack a little bit longer, which gives the tie rod more room to go inside the rack, which would give it more angle. And that's the important part. And that's what I would be missing if I just ran S14 tie rods or any longer tie rods. So really you need the combination of both. You need that rack spacer and you need longer tie rods. So we're gonna do stock 350Z tie rods, and I'm gonna run a rack spacer on both sides. Typically with the bolt-on lock kit, you'd run one spacer on one side and a really small spacer on the other side. And that gives you just enough to get. So I'm hoping with the spacer on each side of the rack, stock tie rods and everything else just kind of adjusted correctly, it should work. Just wanted to clear that up because I had misspoke in the last video about this where I had talked about running different tie rods. So I'm gonna get everything together, verify that it works, <laughs> and we'll take it from there. The whole time I've been working on that, I got the first coat of fiberglass resin laid on the back of the side skirt, and it's turning out all right. Even though I don't like fiberglass repairs, I think it's gonna look okay. So we got just a nice coat of resin. There's some matte in there, some matte in there. It's actually already dry. And you can see I use screws just to hold it together temporarily, and we'll end up pulling the screws out, sanding the front side down, and doing some more matte on the front. All right, I'm waiting for the right tie rods to show up at the local auto parts store, but I realized that I've never given you guys a proper update on what I've done to the back end of this thing. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen it because I've done like little clips here and there, but I never actually document it in a video. And we have changed up quite a bit, taken close to 100 pounds out of the back of this thing. Let me show you how. For starters, we've got my old hatch with no glass in it at all. Did some cool dimple dyes. And you may notice it's now held on with these latches. Let me show you why. With the hatch open, you can see I completely cut the back of the hatch out. There's normally like three or four layers of metal here. The latch would go here. And between taking the glass out of this thing, cutting out all the sheet metal, and really getting it stripped down, we've actually cut the weight of this factory hatch more than in half. Completely stock. These things weigh close to 70 pounds and this now weighs less than 30. I think it was like 28 or 29 pounds. Obviously like a carbon version or carbon Kevlar version would be lighter but I think for stock sheet metal it's pretty good. 
As far as the trunk is concerned, you can see these are the little standoffs I made for the quick latches there. And I did that because I cut the whole back section out. The normal factory latch would be here on like a big piece of sheet metal that's a few layers thick. So cut all that out. Bottles now mounted vertically and a new Optima battery. Again, a huge thank you to Optima for jumping on board, sponsoring this car. We've got an Optima on the Miata. Super grateful to them and happy to have them on board. It's amazing to have a reliable battery in my car so we don't have to push start this thing anymore. That was such a stressful moment at Hot Pit the first round. <laughs> not happening again. Now, obviously I'm not done back here. I want to like clean all this up and paint it and paint that. You can see I did some stitch welding there. It doesn't look great. I was still learning on getting the welder set up, but still have to paint really everything. But we're getting there. Progress is being made. I think it looks cooler. It's definitely going to work better. And again, like I said, we shaved almost 100 pounds off the back of this thing between everything I cut out. And the nitro system should work better with the bottle being vertical. And obviously the car is going to actually start now with the right battery in here. Another bit of weight savings we did is the quarter windows are now gone. Um, I'm going to make a Lexan or polycarbonate cover for these, but for now, no windows. It does look pretty cool with that nitrous bottle just kind of poking up out of the back here. Now the long-term plan is to do about halfway down of a Lexan polycarbonate window. So we'll go from here to probably about here. And then I'll build a rear firewall off of this straight up. That way the cabin is totally sealed off. And then I'll just leave this back part open. It'll be cool because smoke will come out of here and out of these little holes. And that'll happen when I actually cut the back of this car off. Like everything back there is eventually going to be gone. But it's all in steps. This is where we're at now. This is going to work for the next two events. And then we'll just kind of take it from there. If I'm being honest, I'm waiting until I just get a little too deep in the wall and I actually need to like replace a quarter panel and then I can do over fenders and cut the back end off and go down that whole road. But we're not there yet and I don't like cutting up a car that doesn't need it. So this isn't putting into the universe that I want to crash, but a little wall tap I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Another significant change we made to this thing that you can't really see is we actually swapped out the diff. So instead of the factory 3.5, we're now running a 4.08 final drive. So by completely changing the gear ratio, we're really gonna change the characteristics of how the car drives and how the gearing is. So for example, at Irwindale, I was able to shift up into third, initiate onto the first small bank, and I was kind of in the middle of third. Obviously when it rained, everything changed, but in the dry, I was kind of in the middle, and the sweet spot of the power band is a little bit higher than that. And then on the infield, I had to downshift. And then as we got back to the outer bank, I had to upshift into third. And really, it was that last outer bank that I was just not in the right spot as far as the power band's concerned. I was just a little too low in third gear. So by totally changing the gear ratio and making it a shorter one, using Irwindale as an example, I would probably still be in third, but I would now be at the top of third, like really revving it out. And I might even be able to stay in third in the infield. I'm not sure but I'm definitely excited to find out. I think that's gonna be one of the biggest changes here. Cause I mean like losing hundred pounds or so, you might feel it, you might not, but I think that gear ratio is gonna do a lot for us. Another change we're making is about tires. This is why I'm so grateful to work with a company like Vitor cause they are helping me out big time. And we're actually switching the car from running on 265s, we're going down to 235s. Now it sounds kind of contradictory. Why would you want a smaller tire? especially in such a competitive field like Hot Pit. If you don't mind me talking for a little longer, let me explain why I think it's a good idea. So it kind of falls in the same category as the gear ratio change. The main thing I'm after is a higher wheel speed. It's gonna keep the car in drift and it's gonna make it easier to drift. When your rear wheel speed is pretty close to the front wheel speed or vehicle wheel speed, it makes it hard for the car to stay in drift. And that was something I really noticed in the rain was even in third, the car still wasn't super happy. I was really struggling to keep the wheel speed up, which meant it was hard to keep the car in drift. It sounds silly, and if you watch the live stream, it looked silly because like who could struggle to keep a car sideways in the rain? But it's just because the difference in wheel speed of the rear wheels and the actual vehicle was not far enough apart that it was easy to maintain a drift. Hopefully you're following along with what I'm trying to say here because it gets a little confusing. But at the end of the day, my goal is to have a higher rear wheel speed 
which is gonna make the car easier to drive and easier to maintain in a drift. It's also gonna be easier to hold it at big angle. And really, I shouldn't lose any actual speed. I shouldn't lose any forward drive because we're still gonna be on the same compound tire. And if you really think about it, I should actually be able to dial in more grip on a smaller tire. The reason for that is because on a 265, I have the car set up full stiff. The shocks are full stiff, the sway bar is full stiff, and we're running like 50 PSI, sometimes higher. If I drop down to a smaller tire, I can run less PSI, I can soften up the car, meaning I can soften the dampers, put the sway bar on a softer setting, and dial in more mechanical grip from the chassis. I can play more with grip on tire pressure, and I really have a lot more variables to kind of tune in, as opposed to just maxing everything out and hoping for the best and having no real room to adjust. So if you see me at Hot Pit or one of these events and you think, why is this guy running 235s while everybody else is on 265s? Now you know. And it'll be really interesting to see how we do because this is the first time I'm gonna be competing on a smaller tire. I've ran smaller tires before. Actually, the first like year and a half I was drifting that thing, I was always on really cheap 235s. And I made the switch to 265s on Drift Week because they lasted way longer, but we were running a harder compound and that's another story. But it was just kind of like natural once you get into competition of, to always think like, yeah, I need a bigger tire. I need to run the same thing the big dogs run, but really like, why am I doing that? <laughs> I'm, I'm battling guys that have like six, seven, 800 horsepower. I don't need to be on the same tire they do. It's obvious now why it didn't work. And like I said, I'm excited to make the change. I think it's gonna be really cool. I'm just crossing my fingers that it actually works. We're gonna be testing this theory of small tire uh, next weekend, we're actually driving an event hosted by my buddy Bailey, Cat Daddy, as some of you guys know him. He hosts the Ultimate Drift Challenge at Apple Valley Speedway, and it is a 215 spec event, I meaning you have to be on a 215 rear tire, which is really small. So it's going to give me the opportunity to really play with the chassis and the suspension settings and the alignment settings and really try to find as much mechanical grip as I can because we're not going to get any grip out of these tires. I'm really looking forward to that, and I think it's going to be a lot of good kind of training for hot pit not necessarily driving wise but like knowledge wise i'm going to learn how to really set the car up and dial it in when i don't have the grip of a big tire to rely on so i'm definitely excited for that that's actually next weekend so that'll probably be the next video you see we'll see how we do it's going to be at apple valley speedway and i have not ran tires that small in a really long time <laughs> it'll definitely be interesting but i'm crossing my fingers we do well there and take that energy into hot pit Sorry for boring you guys with so much tech talk, but I wanted to kind of touch on that because I think it's an interesting and some people were scratching their heads when I was telling them I was gonna to go to a smaller tire. So I figured I'd share with you, but let's get these unloaded because we still have a good bit of work to get done on a Z. This car was on jack stands for almost a month. It feels so good to have it back on the ground. Just turning it lock to lock, getting a good idea of the angle, making sure nothing rubs, taking it for a quick test drive, and boy does the steering feel so much more snappy. It's amazing what having a single lower control arm does, as opposed to the factory double ball joint weirdness. Drives super good. It feels a lot like a well set up S chassis. I cannot wait to take this thing to the track. I mean, just look at how much more angle it has. That's going to be a wrap on this one. You guys will have to stay tuned for the next video where we actually take this thing to the track and jump straight into competition. Wish me luck, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.